since Eli has left us, praise be, um, Daniel Jones has taken over at the helm of the New York football giants. Um, talk to me a little bit about what you expect out of him in year three. Talk to me a little bit about what you'd like to see done with pick 11. Um, and just kind of talk to me about what you think needs to be done in order to turn this franchise around because they did not play well in an extremely weak division, a very winnable division. And then everyone kind of threw their hands up when the Eagles didn't let them take the division. Yeah, which that's a story in and of itself because that pissed me off. Like, people being upset that the Eagles didn't just, like, oh, the Eagles winning would have just given it to us. We sh- What the fuck? It seemed like they just choked the game out, benching their best players. And I'm like, first off, we sucked. Like, we were a bad football team. Like, very bad. Everything's bad. It's all bad. bad. It's all bad. Yeah, like, everything about the team was very, very not great. So, with that being said, why would I be happy about our biggest rival winning a football game and that enabled us to get into the playoffs at six and fucking ten? Like, what's the proud moment in hosting a playoff game that you're going to get blown out by the Super Bowl champions at? Like, because that would have been the case is we would have been playing the Bucks. The Bucks yeah, would have would fucking have just that. destroyed us. I know that we played them in the regular season and it was a decent game, but like they were bad at the beginning of the season and it took them a while to get their stride under Arians and Brady. Like it's, uh, there's so much that I could say about it because it's very frustrating. Uh, the positives out of last season is our defense showed a lot of promise in, in a move forward. The difficult thing that we're going to have to figure out is what we do with Leonard Williams. Obviously, he's going to want defensive end star money, and he actually kind of proved that he could do that because I think he got more sacks this year than he's had in his entire career. That um, is a true statement. So he, he really <laughs> did kind of show, I can be that guy for you, um, which was really him kind of taking the franchise tag and saying, fuck you, pay me, um, which I have a lot of respect for that. It's just now that if we do go and pay him, we need him to continue doing that. Um, easier said than done once people have a check in their hands. So, but uh, I think the defense showed a lot of improvement. I think that on the offensive side, what I need out of Daniel Jones to kind of bring it back to your questions, I just need consistency, man. Like that's the biggest thing is inconsistency is he'll go. He went like what? Five games without a passing touchdown or something earlier this season. Something like that. And, but then in some of those games, he would throw for, you know, 300 yards. And then one game, he'd throw for 150 and three picks. Like, I know that not every defense you're going to play is going to be the same. But you got to make sure that those picks that you're throwing, those fumbles that you're losing, like, you're not doing stuff at a time that's costing your team. And that's that's kind of where it is, is it almost seems like he doesn't understand, like, the sense of urgency a little bit. And so I really need to see a better understanding of that. I need to see consistency because really this year, it's the year he's got to make it work because if it does not, if it doesn't work at the end of year three, there might not be a year four. We might be drafting a quarterback if we're in the top five next year. That's just the way that it is. So do you, I agree with a lot of what you're saying. Uh, I do think that he, it almost looks like he doesn't have that internal clock that he knows once he snaps the ball, he's got a three step drop, a five step drop, a seven step four. Yep. And then get it out. It's, it's almost like he doesn't have that internally, which is bad. Um, but, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned. I'm not, I'm not off of the Daniel Jones bandwagon quite yet because he, he has not – he didn't have Saquon at all at it's all very this true. season. Uh, Evan Ingram, where are you? Where do you fall on the Ingram scale? Because Craig and I spoke about him briefly last week, and we both kind of said, you know, he's been a disappointment thus far. He has been. 
Um, if someone offered me like a second round pick for him, I'd probably take it. What if somebody said a third and it was like a mid third pick? Depending on what was on the board would be the consideration. I don't think that's a pick that I, or a draft that, or a trade that I make pre-draft. That's a trade that I make during draft. If someone's like, what do you think about Evan Ingram? And I see that there's, uh, you know, a pass rusher or a tight end on the board that we could actually could, could help benefit our team. I'd consider making that move. Like, I mean, I, I I'd like to see more time under the Joe judge system with kind of keeping these guys together, but week one, the second that we lost Saquon, I knew that the year was a loss. And the fact that the whole division being as terrible as it was lended it to almost us making the playoffs is just kind of, it's just like an orchestra of sadness is what the NFC East is. Like is the only way that I can describe it. Like pianos being played by the Cowboys horn section in Washington drums are Philly. And then we're just playing the strings as everything's going down in flames. Like (laughs) orchestra of sadness. All right. Tell me I'm wrong. (laughs) You're not. Uh, So what, what do you need to see the giants do? Obviously they're pretty close on the cap as well. Um, Mm -hmm. Don't have a whole lot of money to spend. We do not. But what would you like to see cuts as far as cuts are done, as far as restructuring is, is concerned um, and possible position additions, maybe not, maybe not specific names at this point, but if you have any free agency names you're looking at, and then obviously what would you do with pick 11? Yeah, no, I understand. Um, it's a tough one because I don't know if it's worth it to cut Nate Solder, but he's one of those names that I would probably likely try and get rid of if I could. Uh, I mean, I mean, I know he ended up sitting last season out, but he he took that COVID opt out and didn't play the whole year, but he's still in the books for $16 million. And his first year in blue, he didn't do a good job of keeping Jones on his feet. So I'm not inclined to want him there. You know, I I just, you know, obviously I I have no problem with him taking the opt out. It's just I I don't want to be paying him that amount of money when I felt like he underwhelmed in his first year and then he wasn't around in his second year to try and help get better with the team. So didn't he? Well, isn't this year three? Didn't he have a year with Eli and then last year with Jones and then this year would be year three or this year would be year four because he opted out of year three? uh, Yeah, let me take a look here. Uh, it's 33. He doesn't hit free agency until 2023. Um, so he signed with 2018, 2019, opted out last year. Um, so yeah, one year with Eli, one year with Jones. Opt and he out, wasn't good in the Eli year either. So no, he wasn't. He wasn't. Um, well, that was the Eli transitioning to Jones year. Yes. So, um, no, my, my thing is I'd probably go ahead and get rid of him because our offensive line like wasn't unbearable last year and he would have been the biggest part of it if he was there and he wasn't. So to me, that kind of tells me that we don't necessarily need him. Um, Being the fact that, I mean, he is also 33 years old. Like those knees kind of start to give out on the big boys after a little while. Um, Might just be better to kind of ride with what we have, which we do have a relatively young offensive line core that even though we're kind of doing like a whole rotation deal, it seems like it's working work relatively well at times. Um, as far as free agents go, I'm mostly eyeballing wide receivers and depth pieces um, just because the fact that we, we need wide receivers um, in general, we don't really have a lot going on there. We have Sterling Shepard who is a perpetual number two and or slot guy. Uh, we have Golden Tate, who is a perpetual number two and or slot guy. And then we have Darius Slayton, who had a decent rookie year, and they said, let's make him our number one. And then he said, but I'm not ready. Like, because this year for Darius Slayton uh, was underwhelming at best. Um, he, like, has, like, those two games where he just shows flashes, lights it up, and he's like, look at how good I am. 
and everyone's like, hell yeah, Darius Slayton, and then they drop him from his fantasy teams like three weeks later. Like, it's just what it is. Like, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not like over the moon about anybody in free agency, but you have to be looking at if Juju Smith, Juju Smith Schuster is not resigned. You have to maybe take a look at Allen Robinson, who is the best player on a bad team in Chicago, as far as the offense goes, uh, because not trying to take anything away from Khalil Mack. Um, but as far as the offense goes, he was the best player on a bad team. Um, you know, so those are the two names that you have to want if you could, but we're so limited on cap space that even if we get rid of, you know, even if we get rid of Nate Solder and whatnot, we can't, we can't afford to re-sign Dexter Lawrence with where we're at currently. We can't afford to bring in anybody if we, with what, even if we make that cut, that gives us $7 million in cap space. That's all we would have after cutting Nate Solder. We're sitting at just under a million dollars as it is right now. We're that thin line close to the cap. So I don't know where it comes from. So with that, I want to wrap up with with this. Uh, where do you fall on the giving Dave Gettleman another year? Dave Gettleman should have never been given a first year. <laughs> I agree with that statement. No, I mean, is he going to, um, like, just, there's a lot of frustrations here. I mean, I've not been fond of Dave Gettleman since he came. Ooh, it's getting me, getting me all dreary over on this side. I've not <laughs> been a fan of Dave Gettleman since, since he came into New York. I was not a fan of the hire. I was very outspoken to you that I really wanted the Giants to hire Lewis Riddick as their GM. And Lewis Riddick still has not gotten a GM job, so maybe there's something about him, but maybe he's also Eric Bieniemy, and he just interviews badly, apparently, and he's probably the best man for any job. Um, but I don't know. Uh, his scouting has been eh for me. Um, I don't think he's made any deals to where I'm like, wow, that was perfect. How'd you pull that one off? Like the Leonard Williams one it still is a kind of a head scratcher to me because he didn't really fit needs. Um, obviously shipping off Odell for what we got, not really like making me feel great about our options. Especially with a need at wide receiver. Yeah. Now. I mean, that's the thing is I'm trying to remember the year that he came into us. Does he get credit for drafting Saquon? Like, was he the GM at the time? Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, do, do you get credit for drafting Saquon? Like, do you like, cause that was the no brainer pick. Like, honestly, he probably should have traded the pick and went down because there was so, so much want for a quarterback at that position, knowing that he was going to take a running back because I mean, we all knew he wanted Saquon. He basically outright in the media said, I want Saquon. So yeah, not that that's my biggest problem with him over overarchingly, I guess uh, is that he's so unwilling to make moves in the draft. He's so willing to stay, stay in one spot and just take the best value there instead of going up and getting your guy. How how many times in watching the draft last season were we screaming for a different player, someone who was dropping or someone who was available and they would trade back. They would stay stay in their spot and someone else would trade up and and grab that that specific player. The only one I can think of off the top of my head in the moment is the uh, linebacker from Wisconsin who went to the Saints can't remember his name um i'm trying to remember as well but I, I it's not it's not ringing a bell right now i just remember he had a first round grade on or he was a consensus first round pick from everyone fell to the third round and we were screaming to go get him because the linebacker depth yeah. in new york was not as good as it is currently yeah. then and they didn't do it yeah <laughs> Trying to just think of his name. No, I got nothing. But I mean, realistically, and, and this is just kind of me now, you got me looking, so I'm going to be an asshole. Um, 
you asked me my honest opinion as to should he be the guy and what should we do. All you really have to do is look at our 2019 draft to know that he shouldn't be the guy. Zach Bond was his name, by the way. Oh, gotcha. No, the 2019 draft, we drafted Daniel Jones at sixth overall. Okay? We also needed a pass rusher. Josh Allen, Ed Oliver, Devin Bush, who's been a stud in Pittsburgh, Rashawn Gary, who's been solid, all still left there. Brian Burns in Carolina, all gone at that point. Dwayne Haskins did get drafted, but he was the only quarterback that was drafted, other quarterback that was drafted before the second round. So really the Giants' major, major reach at six for Daniel Jones, when most likely no one else was looking for a quarterback. We had a pick again at 17. We drafted Dexter Lawrence, defensive tackle from Clemson. Dexter Lawrence has been good. I think 17 was a good place to pick him. Made a lot of sense. But I would have rather drafted Daniel Jones at 17 and gotten a pass rusher at the beginning of the round. But then we traded back into the first round to draft DeAndre Baker, who, meanwhile, charges against him have been dropped. But we threw that pick away because he got arrested for burglary, robbery, whatever it was. We had to cut ties with him. I think he ended up getting picked up later in the season by the Chiefs and played in a couple games once things got cleared. And he's now on a Super Bowl potential team as a first round talent cornerback that we got rid of because we didn't realize that there was character issues, which that is the GM's number one fucking job. When you're drafting a guy, if you think there's a possibility that there might be character issues in there, which Apparently, it was well known that DeAndre Baker exhibited possible character issues. You didn't pick up on it, trade it up to get this guy. Now we lose draft capital and we lost the player because of the fact that you weren't cognizant of that fact. In fact, I'm just... There's not enough ways that I could say that Dave Gettleman sucks. (laughs) So I'll leave it at this. Dave Gettleman sucks. Well... What would you like Dave Gettleman to do at the 11th pick in this draft? I am a big fan of Matt Miller, who um, I know you know that. Used to work for Bleacher Report, but now he's actually been on, uh, he's doing his own thing, and he's actually been on ESPN a lot this week. So good for him, like really happy that he's getting a lot more recognition for the work that he does. Um, He made a comparison that um, the wide receiver class this year might be the best top three wide receivers he's ever seen. And uh, I'm sorry, but if this is the best wide receiver class you've ever seen and the third best wide receiver in that class is debatably the one that won the Heisman this year, do whatever the fuck you can to get one of those guys on your team. If that means you need to try and trade up from 11 to make that happen, you do it. Like, at this point, I don't care which one of them that you get. Just make it happen. Devonta Smith being the only one that's, even though he's the Heisman winner, he's a little bit undersized, which we already have undersized wide receivers all over our team. I My, my main thing is you have to get yourself a wide receiver and you have – three potentially generational talents at wide receiver in this draft. I think that you need to get one. If he misses out on that and the pick isn't like a Micah Parsons or a Gregory Rousseau from Miami. um, If the pick is pretty much anything but wide receiver or those two players, he needs to be fired immediately because he doesn't know what he's doing. That's just, it's going to be that cut and dry for me. Like, I don't know. I don't know re- really what else to say. It's 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 one of those three scenarios, all of which should potentially be possible at eleven, um, or a possible trade up to get your guy if you see him. Um, but that's my thing. If if you can't find a way to get that done, then you shouldn't be doing the job that you're currently being paid a lot of money to do. Technically, well, we haven't had the combine yet, so they, we don't have actual measurements. But in just there, doing a quick there's look no combine through, this year, as far as I know. I think they oh, canceled it entirely. It's just pro days this that's, year. That's a bummer. 
Well, according to the interwebs and what I saw, Devonta Smith is six one, Jamar Chase is six foot, and Jalen Waddle is five ten. So they are all around the same height. Okay. But Devonta is definitely very thin. He, he is, is thin. very, very He's thin. He's lean. Yes. Very lean. So he needs so. to he needs to bulk up a little bit, but at the same time, not lose that pace that he's got. 